Welcome to Fantasy Sports Daily with Kyle L. Frank and Ray Flowers, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to use the promo code FSD20 for a 20% discount on the products over at FantasyGuru.com. We are back to the task at hand on a Monday. We welcome you into Fantasy Sports Daily. Kyle Elfrey and Ray Flowers, powered by FantasyGuru.com. It is a brand new week, which more importantly is a day closer to the start of the baseball season. And I must say, Ray, woke up this morning, 65 degrees. I think the high is going to be 78. I am officially in spring training mode, especially after labor over the weekend. That's kind of my, for me, Mm -hmm. it's a little different. But for me, Ray, that, that's kind of the official kickoff of, okay, man, it's time to get serious. It's time to prep. It's time to, to worry about my own drafts, other drafts, uh, the labor auctions this weekend, kind of the beginning of, of what I officially would term draft season. And we're, we apparently have your weather because I woke up, it was 43 degrees. Uh, at least it was sunny. Uh, for those people that have been, haven't been checking it out, California, like toward Tahoe and stuff, they had like 190 mile an hour winds at the top of the peaks. Five feet of snow came in over the weekend. So we've got your weather over here, Kyle. But uh, the news is good for baseball. Like you said, it's it's kind of a little heartbreaking because we went to Arizona to cover labor for, I don't know, eight, nine years. So it's kind of, you know, kind of a little sad that it's now changed a little bit. But it was good to get the juices flowing to cover all three drafts and to do two of them with you. Uh, And we will talk about that league of alternative baseball reality here in just a bit. Uh, Before that, though, Ray, with all the snow in Tahoe, that's not too far of a journey for you. Are you tempted to to get out there and experience? uh, Gosh, they've had like 100 inches, I I feel like. Like I I heard that number somewhere. Mm -hmm. A lot of snow in Tahoe. That's going to be tempting to a guy who doesn't get to see nor enjoy snow very often. Yeah, it's about a four-hour drive. It can be a little less if you zip through, but about a four-hour drive, and people do it all the time. The problem is I-80, the main road up there, they close it down. Like 200 people were stuck overnight on the pass because of the snow. Like it's, you know, (laughs) everyone thinks all-wheel drive means I guess you can drive through the snow. That's not what that means. Um, So, yeah, we are tempted to go to get our dog Ollie up there because he's never seen snow, and he loves cold, hates heat, Uh loves cold, so he'd probably love it. But uh, We're not going this week, but we'll see if we can make it up there. No, and and you can't go this week because it's a busy time for Ray Flowers. He is doing the work that needs to be done for you, the Fantasy Guru subscriber, or anybody out there. Ray's always working. You can find him on Twitter, at the Ray Flowers. What do we have for today? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's show you what we've got for today. I mentioned labor. Uh, That league of experts has been going on for over three decades now. They had their big get-together down in Florida this past Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Ray and I were lucky enough to be a part of the coverage with Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. So we'll go through some of the things that we picked up in those auction get-togethers over the weekend. Um, also, Ray wants to spend some time on this, so we're going to let him. The MLB Draft Book, which is over at Fantasy Guru. It's a part of the uh, draft guide that you can still get and still order and still be a part of. Uh, Ray's going to take us through that and why he thinks it is very, very important for you to use if you uh, are a subscriber and are a purchaser of the season-long pack package. Team preview, we'll look at the Milwaukee Brewers. Positional preview, we're up to starting pitchers. I almost feel like, Ray, instead of the usual one-week thing with starting pitchers, I almost feel like we should go two weeks with this position. We could spend a week on the news we've heard the last hour. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's – pitching is, is – uh, I, I continue to be really – I want to use the word stupefied – um, at the way that people draft pitching in the fantasy game because it seems to be go haywire on a daily basis. And uh, we'll get into it, but there's tons of storylines, old guys, guys coming back from injury, young guys ascending, pitchers changing their mechanics or adding pitches. There is a lot to talk about at that position. You mentioned uh, the last hour or so, maybe the morning here on a Monday, uh, Zach Wheeler with the Phillies has a massive new contract. And Kevin Galsman, who is being drafted as an SP1 everywhere, has a bit of an issue that we perhaps need to be concerned with. So we will dig into that. Also, Ray is, I guess, kind of celebrating for at least a year. Uh, Matt Chapman is going to be a San Francisco Giant for at least a year. Uh, We'll talk about the contract he received with the Giants. And there is some NFL news today. Mike Evans getting some money. Not Zach Wheeler money, but it's, it's still pretty good money for Mike Evans. He'll be staying in Tampa. Uh, Darren Waller thinking retirement and NFL thinking 18 games, which I'm sure Ray Flowers is fired up about. <laughs> sure, sure, the players are too, Kyle. Let's get beat up some more. 
Yeah. 18 leads to 19, which leads mm -hmm. to 20. Pretty soon, Ray, it'll be a 35-week season. <laughs> on every continent on Earth. We have the new team this year starting in Antarctica. Yeah. Okay, so lots to get to. But foremost amongst all of those issues and others, we got to tell you how you can enjoy the upcoming baseball season. Ray Flowers has your answer for enjoying 2024. I do. Uh, and for more information on the baseball product, uh, there'll be a link if you look below this uh, to the Rays Rundown. I did a podcast, 2024 MLB intro, where I spent a half an hour talking about the entire product. Not the two-minute thing you get here when I'm trying to sell you something, but the full half hour, everything there is to offer. So check that out at the website. It's free to, to listen to. And again, I'll link it here uh, with this. But basically, here's the deal. You get full season coverage at fantasyguru.com. It's not just draft season product. It's a full season product. Uh, that means we'll, you'll get access to all the articles. You'll get access to Discord to ask all your questions. You'll get access to the updated rankings the first day of every month to redo the entire rankings so you know exactly where your players stand. You get all of that right now. Uh, let me. Oh, I should have checked before the show started. I didn't check about the promo code. Right. It's a new week, Ray. It's a new week. You know how they like sneaking these changes past you. They do. The promo code is FSD20, FSD20. That will work. Let's see if the early bird pricing <laughs> is still up right now. I was told that it's changing this week. Um, so you can wait five days and play more. You can get it now. <laughs> Either way, the promo code FSD20 works. Uh, if you use it right now, that's $40 for the entire season of baseball coverage. Pretty good deal, Kyle. Yeah, do it and do it now. Uh, certainly something to take advantage of. And that number is going to change that uh, entry price, if you will, for the draft guide. Again, we're going to hit on the draft guide in just a bit. But uh, Ray, quickly, uh, some thoughts, I guess, from the auctions. Uh, that you and I were covering, not participating in these auctions, but uh, we have before. But uh, let's see, these are these are fairly, you know, I, I'd say industry heavy leagues. I mean, pretty well everybody has been a longtime member. Some uh, folks are new and we always love getting some fresh blood into the industry, but they all met down in Clearwater slash St. Pete in Florida, kind of part of the uh, first pitch forum that uh, Baseball HQ kind of puts together every year. Uh, it's a fun time. We were doing it remotely, Ray. Uh, we got the auction room. You know, you got 12 team leagues uh, going at it. You've got NL only, AL only. Yesterday, you and I were covering the mixed league auction. And I think most assuredly, Ray, it's always, even though we've done this for a number of years, it's always a reminder that league specific is an entirely different beast uh, versus mixed leagues. Like even within an auction, Ray, it is incredibly easy to build a team. Maybe not a good team, but it's incredibly easy to build a team and to have plenty of talent and plenty of guys to turn to. And pretty well every position on your mixed league team is a starter and you feel good, you know, 450 plate appearances, like all these things fit. You go to NLAL only, Ray, and you maybe have eight of those guys in, in your starting 13 or 14 players. Yeah. And for those people wondering why, Ray, why weren't you in this? I am. I didn't travel to Florida, obviously. So I'm in the Mixed League draft, and that write-up is over at FantasyGuru.com. It's free for everyone to read how my team came together in the in just the Mixed League draft. Uh, the And I wonder, and I've run polls, and we've talked about this with people. Like, there's a few people in Discord that are in league-only setups. I don't know how many people are like that. And I jokingly said, if you're, if you're under 45, you've never played a league-only <laughs> league. Like, you know... Um, it, it, the NL or AL only leagues are the way, like you said, when you were introing labor at the start on Sirius XM, that's how this started. In the beginning, there were no mixed leagues, right? There was AL and there was NL. And I remember, you know, Baseball Weekly and USA Today, I'd get so excited when those things came out because that was the only source we really had for auctions. Like, they, they, we didn't, we, the internet wasn't really a thing yet. So there was no place to find this information. Now we fast forwarded the information's everywhere. And I think we've gotten to the point where we, you and I have talked a lot about baseball and how it's pulled back a little bit in terms of the involvement in fantasy baseball in particular. And, you know, I think that the league only pieces are nice, but I really do wonder the validity there. I mean, most people I talk to are in a 10 team mixed league. They're not doing a 12 team NL only league. Right. So yeah. I enjoy covering it and I love seeing how people put rosters together and all that. But I wonder what the actual usefulness is of those formats, because I just don't think the average person's playing them anymore. Our, uh, our uh, mutual friend, Jeff Erickson with Rotowire, he was helping us with the broadcast. And Ray, he is in a, I think it's an AL only league that's been going on for like 30 years, you know, right. and, and Jeff's our age. So, mm -hmm. you know, Ray makes that joke of 45 or older. That's maybe the only, you know, Jeff's one of us. Mm -hmm. um, and Ray, he said in his AL only league, <laughs> they still have grandfathered the Milwaukee Brewers into oh, the wow. air. <laughs> like, wow. 
<laughs> and how long has it been? I mean, the Brewers have been in the NL for like 20 years. Yeah. I think. <laughs> oh, wow. but they still haven't grandfathered. The Brewers are eligible in an AL only. So even in that league, Ray, like AL rankings are kind of thrown out of source because the Brewers aren't included in a normal league, <laughs> but they wow. are there. I, I, I will say bigger issues, Ray, and this is always the case uh, when we do these auctions or any drafts. You know, it's kind of what's going on in spring training mm -hmm. and how that affects prices. And, and the, the big one this weekend was Ronald Acuna. And uh, I think, Acuna, was it last Friday after you and I signed off, wasn't he scratched from the lineup, I think, Friday of last week? That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, this is news we did not have last time we spoke, but he scratched with a, with a knee issue. It's in the same knee that was repaired a couple of years ago. We are told it's a meniscus. All of that, Ray, doesn't sound awful, but today, Monday, he is flying all the way to California, all the way across the country, uh, to see a specialist. I think it's the same guy maybe who repaired his knee the first time, and we're all kind of wondering what's the news going to be, and maybe we get that news today or tomorrow. Um, maybe it's four weeks. Maybe it's four months. Like there, There's that kind of level of outcomes here, just depending on the severity, mm -hmm. but I bring all that up, Ray, because Ron Acuna is the number one dude. And in an auction like that mixed league yesterday, mm -hmm. he would have gone, I mean, fully healthy. He's going for 60 bucks, you know, high fifties, low sixties. He, he probably, Ray's not going to pay that, but that's where he would have gone. <laughs> high fifties, low sixties. Right. His discount yesterday, Ray, fell to 49. And I kind of wondered aloud if that was still enough of a discount when you have all these other guys who I'm not going to say they're very close to Acuna. But, you know, Bobby Witt Jr., Mookie Betts, um, uh, you know. Tatis was the second most expensive with Tatis, right? Yeah, all these guys are like just a step behind Acuna. And the fact that he's got this uncertain issue, I thought he would fall more into the mid-40s. Mm -hmm. And all those other guys that I just mentioned, they fell at like 40, 41, right about there. Uh, what do you think with Acuna? It, you know, there might be people today doing drafts, mm -hmm. doing auctions, if you don't have the news, how do you handle him? Well, remember, Con and I talked about this. Acuna had one of the greatest, literally, fantasy seasons in the history of baseball. And that's going, what was it, number one all time? I think it was ahead mm -hmm. of Honus Wagner's 1908 when we went to the Rasball Player Raider. <laughs> greatest ever. So yeah. don't draft Acuna, even if he's fully healthy, expecting a repeat. You can't. That's dumb. So where does that mean? Well, you know, he loses five or six home runs. He loses 20 steals. Okay. Is he worth 50 bucks? Well, we just Justin Mason, who got him for $49 yesterday, we were interviewing him and he said he'd still got would have gone to 60. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, and then you look at the NL only league, which is fascinating. He went for 40. Mm. Now, in, in an NL only league, I would be much more inclined to see someone spend 60 on him there than in a mixed league. So the difference there, he can make, yeah. Yeah, there was more concern in the NL, you know, and that makes sense though, too, because if he blows out in an NL only league, you're hosed with all the money you're spending. We'll find out today. I mean, again, regression is almost certain to happen. You know, he's not going to score 149 runs until 73 bases again. It's not happening. There's the knee issue that's there, which is a concern. And there is something that I've talked about a lot on the show and articles and Discord. The group think is insane. You mentioned this on the broadcast. There were 204 drafts in February at the NFBC, and he was 204 for 204 as the first pick. His ADP was 1.00 from February, <laughs> which is impossible. So there's a lot of things going against him. We'll hopefully not get news today that it's something significant. Uh, they don't seem to think it is, but the wording of, of Snicker was kind of yeah, it was kind of dicey a little bit there. I, I wasn't really worried Ray until I heard he was sliding around the country, you know, all the way across the country. You know, and, and that's I, it, it maybe I've always said, especially with football, but even for baseball, because uh, we'll get like arm injuries, elbow things, and it's like they seek a first opinion, which mm -hmm. Acuna's kind of already gotten that. Right. Because I guarantee you on Friday, they put them in an MRI machine or they, so that's your first opinion. Usually when you seek a second opinion or a more expert opinion, it's not really good news. That's usually the case, not say a hundred percent accurate, but that's usually the case. So I make, I, I would say this, Ray, if I had to make a call right now, mm -hmm. he's not ready for opening day. I had to make that call right now. Well, and I'll tell you this, it, it was really hard because I want I always update the rankings at fantasyguru.com, especially when it's a significant player like this. If you know we're worried about Willie Castro, we can you know okay. But when it's the number one guy, I dropped like six, seven bucks off him 
And again, my auction price is, is lower than what you're what he went yeah, for this you, weekend. Did you vault the likes of Wit or a bets beyond Acuna, or is he still your number one guy overall? He, he's still the number one guy by a dollar. So <laughs> if we're doing the dollar. He's at forty four, and I have Wit at forty three. Okay. So I, again, it you know, and he was at on my board. I think I was at he was at forty nine or fifty when the weekend started. So I dropped him down. We have we just have to see. Yeah. Um, and you know, when you're talking about investing the number one pick overall or this much of your budget in a guy that's, you know, I couldn't do it. If even I had the number one pick, like your season doesn't hinge on that, but it kind of does, right? Like if it's like you're saying, if it's news, we got to shut this guy down for six weeks, ee, you know, so it's a tough call if anyone's drafting right now before the news breaks. Yeah. And it, I think everybody's going to have to do their own thing if we hear six weeks, because then you're missing, you know, at least 20 games, probably maybe more. Um, now, remember, he's done that before and come back and been a stud. So he, he still would be a stud. But if you get 135 games of Acuna versus 155 games of Bobby Witt Jr., you know, you got to measure that out, however yep. you see a fit. So, again, we'll wait for the news on Acuna probably tomorrow by this time. Uh, we will have at least some information as to what's going on with him. Uh, moving along, Ray, let's talk about something that I believe every Friday you are currently updating as we go through spring training. It is the uh, MLB draft book. Okay, so this is a part of the draft guide, correct? Correct. This draft book. Give us the rundown. What are we talking about with this MLB draft book, which again is something that is the living and breathing feature of the draft guide you put out is in effect, Ray. I mean, this thing is getting updated 24-7 for the most part, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, yes and no. And that's, that's part of what want to have the discussion with now i'm just going to say this at the top and then we'll get into why you all want the draft book we create the draft book for you ray flowers hand is up ray flowers would never use the draft book to get the draft <laughs> give the people what they want ray <laughs> we are we give it to them but it's like and i apologize for the coloring not for some reason coming through there very well on the screen um so what we have in the draft the draft book is updated every friday as i just noted the rankings are updated daily why is it the draft book updated every day because i got to do the whole damn thing by hand OK, so it's just not it's not feasible. So if you want the updated rankings, you have a draft on a Thursday. The updated rankings are the rankings. The draft book is every Friday. OK, the draft book is meant to be a one stop. Here's the, here it is. Take it to the draft with you thing. OK, I think that it is antithetical to everything that I believe, which is why I would never use it with how to put a team together. Because in essence, we don't have a top overall rankings list at fantasyguru.com. This in essence is a top overall rankings list. What it does is it says, okay, and you can see on the screen there, you know, I clipped a couple of the positions from the end of the draft. It has each round separated. We're assuming a 12 team league. So each round is separated into column A and column B. So column A is the first six picks of that round. Column B is the second six picks of that round. So there's 12 players per round listed by positions and then on the left hand column is the value in the auction the values in the auction on the ranking sheet and in the draft book are not identical because we're looking at buckets here we're not looking at the individual players number one and number two like i said this is a this is a clear way for people to organize things but i've heard a lot of people then say well ray you've got this guy ranked ahead of this guy and then this guy no okay this is easy for you to read and easy for you to understand. And some people love it. But again, Kyle, there's no context to this. There's no understanding of how you put your team together. There's no understanding. Oh, I grabbed the pitcher last round. That means I, I don't need to pitcher this. Round. There's no context whatsoever to doing this. And I just don't really like it. And I, I guess the question is, okay, the people want it. The people use it. You produce it. But you say, I don't. I don't use it. I don't like it. I wouldn't recommend it, <laughs> which is, hey, I love the honesty. Sometimes. I said it in the article. The article itself says I wouldn't use this. Yeah. So here you go. User beware, I guess, is what Ray is putting there. So the question then comes, okay, Ray Flowers, what's better? So mm -hmm. so what is better? What would you like to, and I, I'm sure this is somewhere in the draft guide, but mm -hmm. maybe what would you promote they use instead of this draft? Yeah, the last sentence is I prefer the tiering model, and it's linked to the tiering model article. Um, because let me be clear about this: like, you, I understand the desire to have this, you know. And I hate—I told Jeff Manns the other day, I hate you, Jeff Manns, because again, this is a lot of work, and it's you know, the draft guide to me is a cheat sheet. It's and it's something that I would say it this way without trying to offend anybody. If you're using this, you're probably not prepared. 
this is to me more like I signed up on Friday and I got a draft on Saturday. Ray, help me out. Yeah. Okay. You know, versus someone that spent the last month and a half reading every article at the site. The tiering model is more important because the tiering model helps you to determine which players are on the same tiers at each position, which is if you look at the rankings, they're color coded to help you out. Which players are on the same tiers like level producers. And it also tells you where you should be comfortable and not comfortable at a position. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's 15 players you really trust, but it, you need to start 24 of them. Well, then you really want to get one of the first 15 guys. Let's, let's say we're in a two catcher league as an example. This draft book just lists the players, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just so that, you know, their catchers are just coming up when they're coming up, you know, based upon the way the board is. Yeah, but it's not based upon the way your team is being constructed. So to me, Kyle, and you and I have talked about this a lot, the tiering model is just a better way to do that because if you follow the draft book, you might end up infield heavy and outfield light. You might end up power heavy and speed light. You know, you might end up pitching heavy or pitching light because if you're just merely following where the guys fall on the, like you're crossing them off on the draft book, I think it can be a very misleading result. What I've always loved about tiering, Ray, is it tells you when to strike at a certain position. One, one feature of baseball that's, really really different from the other sports is there are so many more positions and there's so many more players on your team so there is much more of a challenge of trying to figure out when do i go with this spot when do i worry about shortstop or when do i gotta get my fourth outfielder when do i have to get my second catcher there's a lot more of that when do i go a hitter versus a pitcher i mean these things are in every round you're kind of wondering about and what I've loved about tiering, Ray, is it tells you, okay, I still haven't filled up second base. And, oh, I still haven't filled up third base. So let's keep it here. I'm looking at a second and third baseman. Well, according to my tiering or Ray's tiering, whoever you want to go with, um, there are still four starting level, you know, top 12 or top 14, 15, whatever the number may be, guys that Ray is comfortable with as being your starting second baseman. Let's say that there's still four of them. Right. Third base, there's one left two left and boom that tells you simple mathematics i need both positions but there's more guys available here now there is the further step ray that could change the tiering where you say okay there's two third basemen left i should probably concentrate here but i look at my team i'm pretty deep in the draft i could get this second baseman and he's the only second baseman of those four that can still be 30 bases Maybe I should still go second base, even though the mm -hmm. tiering, I'm not getting any steals from third. These two guys can't steal me. At second base, there's maybe a guy can get me 12, and then there's a guy with 30. And man, that guy with 30 not only fills my position, but he helps my category. And, and so, Ray, this tiering is not, again, the end-all, be-all, but it's part of the roadmap of figuring out when to strike, where to strike, how to strike. And, and that's why I, tiering is work. I will say that, Ray. If you're going to – now, Ray does a lot of the tiering for you, so a lot of you should probably just rely on him. But if you're to do this yourself, Ray, it is a lot of work, but it really helps out within the draft. Yeah, again, there's numbers and color coding in the rankings. So, you know, one is green, second is light green, three is blue. Like, there, it's it's very obvious. Now, you might disagree with my rankings. Adjust them. Like you're saying, I might think that there are three guys on the top tier. You might think it's two. I might think there's seven guys on the second tier. You might think it's nine. Just adjust it yourself. Because I think that, yeah, again, that's really the right way to do this. And my fear is that people use the draft book. And like I said, they basically just cross players off, right? And it's like, well, this, this guy's supposed to be taken in the second half of the third round. It's the first half of the fourth round. I got to take him. It's like, well, you know, I'm maybe. Um, and, I, and I think that. We come from we come from an area where people like in fantasy football as an example, there everyone puts out top overall lists. And this is what we fight all the time. There's no context to a top overall list. If you've already got a quarterback, you know in your head, I don't need a second quarterback in the fifth round. I just took one in the third round. You know that. So you just immediately discount that. I think in baseball, we don't have that because as you're as you're pointing out, we have more positions and we have more categories. So it's much more difficult to rule someone out or rule someone in unless you have that background knowledge set up. So, you know, again, it's there. If, if it works for you, use it. You can discount what I said, because again, if it works for you, that's great. I just think that there is an absolutely clear cut, better way to draft than using the draft book. So the draft book is a tool you can use, maybe not the suggested tool <laughs> that you should use. 
Uh, but hey, it's it, again, I everybody's working from different levels of interest, involvement, preparation. So it's all there. Uh, what works for you? Some people, like Ray said, it's the people who buy it, who download it on their way to the draft. Other people, you've had it since, you know, early February. So, you know, you're a little more advanced than those folks. But good stuff there. MLB Draft Book, uh, part of the Fantasy Guru Draft Guide. Uh, let's get to some news and notes uh, from the weekend that was. And, uh, Ray, actually, most of the news came this morning. We were talking about Ronald Acuna, questions there with an injury. Kevin Gaussman, who probably isn't a name, Ray, that people get, like, fired up about. Like, oh, Kevin Gaussman, he's awesome. But he's actually probably an SP1 coming into the year, and uh, that is now maybe up for debate. Uh, underwent an MRI on his shoulder. They're telling us nothing was found, but, Ray, they're saying it's fatigue, um, which, you know, in and of itself, that's fine if it's really just fatigue, but now we have to wonder even about Kevin Gaussman, a guy who, you know, Ray, oh, I'm an innings person. I want to get innings. <laughs> well, Kevin Gaussman, I guess we have to wonder about his innings now for this season. Yeah, and I was joking around with Phil Backer, <clears throat> excuse me, this morning. We were talking about this, and I am. Um... And I said, and I, I'll repeat what I said to him. You're a lunatic if you draft pitching early. You're a lunatic. <laughs> Kevin Gaussman is the prime example of just point and shoot. Quick, Kevin Gaussman. Kevin Gaussman now, we're not even certain. And, and the wording, Keegan Matheson, you know, put out this. He's de- and I'll read the actual tweet. Gaussman is dealing with general shoulder fatigue. Okay, fine, right? We get that. Shoulder fatigue in spring, no big deal. And here's the part that's concerning. Quote, and didn't fully bounce back after his last session, unquote. Like that to me is just, you're throwing a bullpen session in your shoulder. Like, e. like that's not good. So yeah, you say uh, bounce back, but it's almost like you felt something in that yeah. session. You know, it's not, a, it's not like you threw and everything was fine. You wake up the next morning, like, oh gosh, it's a little, and maybe, I mean, maybe either way, it's something <laughs> to no. begin with this guy, Ray. He's not just reporting, oh, I was. 95% of my usual self. I mean, Kevin Gaussman, if, if he's doing anything, it's it's something that he, and I hate to say he knows it's bad. I mean, nothing, but it's different for him. Right. He's he's a veteran. He knows what it's supposed to feel like, yep. especially in spring training. Yep. He's not a guy trying to earn a spot on a team or earn a new contract. He's just a guy who's done it a lot. And so, Ray, the fact that he's even mentioning it, it gives you reason to, to, to raise the eyebrow and, and, and raise a little bit of alarm. And it's just like Justin Verlander, same kind of thing, right? Like these guys, it's just the wing doesn't feel right. And it's like, it, and again, this could end up being nothing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely could end up being nothing. He might be, he might miss one start. He might not miss any starts. He might be good to go on opening day. Who knows? But, you know, the shoulder, I think it, it's, it's an interesting scenario because one, a lot of pitchers, and you've seen this already, have shoulder soreness in camp because they're really starting to ramp things up. And that they teams, I think, consider that kind of normal. But two, it's the shoulder. And the shoulder, as we've talked about before, it's really messy in there. You know, there's there, it's it's much more complicated than the forearm or the elbow, even though those injuries knock you out for a year if you have to have UCL repaired. So it's definitely something to think about, something to keep in mind. And again, like the Acuna news, we've had to drop, I dropped Kevin Gaussman eight spots in the rankings this week. Yeah. I, I mean, I was to. just gonna say, Ray, like guys like Luis Castillo, George Kirby, Zach yeah. Gallon, Pablo Lopez, they're healthy. Yep. You know, not that I know they're going to throw more innings or they're better than Gaussman, but it's close anyway yep. between all those guys. So Gaussman falls to the back of the pack whenever Absolutely. you have an injury like yep. this. Just exactly yeah. what happened. Oh, uh, Zach Wheeler, a guy who's. Oh, yeah, I am. You got gotcha. Me? Oh. OK, <laughs> sorry. OK, sorry about that. Um, Zach Wheeler is a guy who's also right there with Gaussman, maybe a little bit ahead of him, I think, in most drafts. Uh, Wheeler is in the news today, and Ray, it's for a gigantic contract. Like, <laughs> Philadelphia, if nothing else, is spending money on their team. Now, I fear they're becoming a little too leveraged. I mean, they got big contracts on the books all over the place. In and of itself, hey, you want to keep Zach Wheeler. And, Ray, we get news today. It's a uh, extension. Mm-hmm. Three years. This will start next year. I think he's still under contract with the 2024 deal. But beginning in 2025, Ray, we're talking three years and $126 million. Over 40 million bucks for Zach Wheeler. The, the good news is it's short term. The good right. news is, you know, you're not committing to eight years at 40 million. But that number kind of caught me off guard whenever I saw it. Over 40 million bucks for Zach Wheeler. At 35, 36, and 37 years of age, too. You know, it's not quite Max Scherzer, you know, and Verlander, but we're getting close. And this goes... 
this goes back to the discussion we had the other day too about age and pitching and how you know a lot the pitching is you know we talk about wanting to get everyone at 27 years old teams are willing to invest millions and millions of dollars at guys in their mid-30s now because if you've gotten there and you've had that success as we talked about last week uh it's it's fascinating because wheeler as someone you know he was a giant guy back in the day and the giants had all these concerns about his durability he was breaking down and they moved him to the Mets and, you know, kind of struggled a little bit at his career, but then he found it and he's been dynamite yeah. and he has turned into one of the innings eaters in baseball. His ratios are strong. His strikeout rates are not necessarily elite, but they're right behind it for a starting pick. He's just damn good. And you look at his performance in the postseason; it's even better than the regular season. So he's the, he's the whole package here, uh, including, you know, throwing 190 innings and in three of the last four full seasons. But that is a lot of money for a guy that'll be 37 at the end of the contract, Kyle. Yeah, and I mentioned the Phillies. I mean, you got giant contracts with Harper, Castellano, Schwarber, Turner, Nola, uh, Real Muto. And, and all these guys are good players, uh, but they're all in their 30s. <laughs> like every single one of them, I think. Um, so it's 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 fun. I mean, if you're a Phillies fan, everybody wants to keep the guys that, that have made the good seasons. And Wheeler, Nola, Harper, you know, those guys have been important to, to the great run. Uh, but man, you, you run the risk and it's just a three-year deal. I'm just, I'm not saying Wheeler is the problem here, but it's kind of like the whole team and how they're spending money, but everybody loves to spend money and they love to know that Zach Wheeler is going to be a Philly for the uh, next four years, because I don't know if that contract's able to be traded really. I think he has a full no trade as well. Well, I think you they know? said he turns 10, five. So 10 years in the league, five yeah. with the Phillies th this season too. So you're right. It'll in essence, it'll be untradeable unless he wants to be dealt. Yeah. Okay. So there we go on Wheeler. Uh, Matt Chapman finally found a home. Still waiting on Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery. Ray, you're shaking your head. Come on. All you Giants people, you want players. They give you a player. And now you're shaking your head in disdain for Matt Chapman, huh? I guaranteed to my brother like three weeks ago the Giants would sign Chapman. So I knew yeah. I knew it was going to happen. Indeed. Guaranteed it to my brother. He asked. I'm like, I'm telling you, this is the way it's going to play out. <laughs> uh, I don't I, – I'll say it just point blank. The Giants organization's in trouble <laughs> because they cannot sign a free agent without giving up opt-outs. Like you said, this is a three-year deal. It's a one-year deal. They yeah. announced it as a three-year deal. By the time it was officially announced, it became a one-year $18 million deal. So he took less money, Chapman, than the qualifying offer. He apparently turned down like a $120 million deal with the, the Blue Jays. So clearly he and Scott Boris misread the situation completely, right? But the fact that the Giants have to give opt-outs, here's the scenario that plays out. Matt Chapman hits 231 with 17 home runs. He's with the Giants next year. Matt Chapman hits 260 with 35 home runs. He's gone next year. So it, <laughs> I, I don't like I don't understand organizationally why, you know, and I guess there's a whole bunch of you know behind the scenes for those people that don't know, there's a whole bunch of concern amongst players because they all think San Francisco's an asshole because the 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 the, the the uh, hotels where they stay are in the crappiest region of San Francisco. So the players go outside and there's bums on the street and they think that's what San Francisco is. So apparently they're having a massive problem attracting people to come to San Francisco, which is insane. Kyle's talked about it. It's beautiful here, right? Well, they got to send them to the best Western in San Mateo, get them to a better part of town. I yeah, guess. there you go, Kyle. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, it's a, it's a good signing for the Giants, of course. He'll go out and hit his 240 with his 25 home runs and be solid, play strong defense. But I, from a team building perspective, front office perspective, this is disastrous because it's a one year contract. He's gone if he does anything other than break his leg or be terrible. He's gone. What, what, fantasy wise, top, is he a starting third baseman? I kind of wonder. This ballpark won't help. And really, I, I, honestly, if nobody was going to do this, but Ray, if he was able to, let's just say, sign a one year contract last April, mm -hmm. that one year contract would have been for about 28 million bucks. Yeah. Because he was the best hitter in baseball in April. <laughs> he really was. And, and again, nobody was going to give him a contract after April or anything. The Blue Jays weren't. But the rest of the year, Ray, he was bad. You know, he just, it, it, I see power. That'll probably mm -hmm. still be there. The, but everything else, I don't really see mattering here with Matt Chapman for a fantasy player. Yeah, and if you look at the the fan graphs is a great website. They have a whole series of projection models and, and the numbers that they have there on the projection models are basically what I said when he was drafted in labor. There's an audiogram out on at Series X and Fantasy. He's a 235-25 guy with 80, 80, 85 RBIs, which again is totally fine, but really he's Eugenio Soares. Mm. So these guys are, you know, 
you in a 10 team mixed league, I don't think you draft these guys or they're like late reserve round picks. In a 12 team mixed league, if you have corner infield, okay, you know, okay. But they, you know, both of them, Chapman and Suarez, I think are kind of in that Josh Bell zone, the guy that's like, okay, you know, it's like it's Matt Chapman's not hitting 290. He's not hitting 40 home runs. He's not driving in 100 runs with this Giants lineup. The ballpark is an issue in San Francisco for power. So, yeah, it's like, I think it's a good signing for the Giants 2024, but Mm -hmm. he's not an exciting fantasy option in 2024. Couple of uh, other quick things. Sounds like Gunnar Henderson will make his spring debut today. That's some good news. They've been uh, taking it easy with him in Baltimore. He's had an oblique injury, so I haven't really pushed him, but uh, he is set to be on the field today. And uh, been a while since we've mentioned closers. Uh, this is not a good mention, but David Bednar of the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates dealing with lat tightness. So <laughs> we'll see. You know, kind of like the Acuna thing, kind of like the Gaussman thing. We shall see. Must be the third week of spring training, Ray, because yes, now we're we're treading into the murky waters of injuries. <laughs> it's funny, right? Because you and I talk about this a lot. In the old days, and when we were kids, players would show up out of shape and get into shape at camp. Right? They'd work at a car dealership in the off season. They'd manage an apartment building in the off season. They'd show up and they get in shape in baseball. Now these guys train year round. And they break down in spring. I don't, it's really, I don't get it. I really don't get it. If, you know, a pitcher shouldn't have a problem with the shoulder three weeks into camp. Have you not been doing things in the off season? Like I, are you throwing at 62% in the off season? You're throwing the ball at 73 miles an hour to your son. Like I don't, so I don't get it, but yeah, we're really starting to see some injury issues start to pop up here. Yeah. So we'll continue to follow all of that. Uh, see if we get a Blake Snell signing, Jordan Montgomery. Those maybe now Scott Morris can pay attention to those guys. He's he's gotten Bellinger taken care of and Chapman, so now I'll handle the pitching. Uh, he probably has a staff of about eighty. Don't you bet, Ray? I mean, he gets all the credit and the hate, but he's got right. a big, big staff behind him. I'm, I'm sure. sure he does. Yeah, and it's interesting. And he's he gets his guy. He's always gotten his guys the money. This is the year that stopped. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think organizations and there's a lot of data that show this that. The 21 to 27 year olds are there. They show up ready to play. They're elite talents. Uh, they do great things on the field. They their WAR is higher than the, the 31 year olds and all that. And teams say, "Look, I'm paying these guys three 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 million dollars. Why am I going to sign some dude for 20 million dollars? It's going to be the same as I got right here." So no. that veteran zone. If you don't get that big contract at 26 to 28, or if you're not a superstar, it's getting harder and harder to get that huge number. Let's open up the uh, can on the starting pitchers for this week. That is what Ray and I are focusing. We are uh, pretty well done with the hitters, I guess. Now we're talking starting pitchers going into the uh, new season. Always like to start with our top 12, just to remind you, although many of you are looking at the rankings and most of these guys are ranked this way. Uh, But Spencer Strider was number one, $35.80. Cole right behind him at $35.10. A lot of people leaning towards Strider, but uh, if you went Cole, that wouldn't be the worst decision with that. Um, after those two, Ray, it's kind of a uh, chooser's market. You know, everybody's going to be different here. In terms of last season, Blake Snell was number three, Zach Gallon four, Zach Eflin got the five, Castillo, Gaussman, who we were talking about, Justin Steele, $22.20, was about 10 cents better than Zach Wheeler. Kyle Bradish, George Kirby, and Logan Webb. So, Ray, there's very expected names on that list. And then there are names like Zach Eflin and Justin Steele and Kyle Bradish, even Logan Webb to an extent. But Eflin, Steele, and Bradish. Do you worry about all those guys pulling back this season? Did they all kind of outpitch their peripherals, if you will? Yeah, obviously, Bradish with the issue, you know, we're not certain when he's going to start. So we'll deal with that when we get information. Steele, my breakout pitcher of the year, who was the breakout pitcher of the year. Uh, it's weird to be in the position the follow-up year going, he was, too good. he was too good last year. I was too um, awful awesome with my prediction. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my prediction was so great, even I can't believe it at this point. Um, I think it's fair to posit some pullback, yeah. But at the same time, I think he proved last year that he can soak up innings and be quite effective doing that. So, you know, Still is he a top SP 10? Two? I have him as an SP3. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. In certain scenarios, could he be a two? Yeah, but he's to me, I want him as my third. Uh, the Eflin thing, you know, he's fascinating because Eflin, Eflin was my breakout pitcher of the year like four years ago. <laughs> Maybe it was three years ago. No, it was four years ago. And I was a little early to the to the to plate, right? 
Uh, he is a tremendously skilled guy pitching for an organization that gets the most they can out of all their pitchers with the Rays there. But he's constantly dealing with physical things. And last year, even though he pitched all the innings, his knee was barking. And, you know, and so it's like, I think that Eflin, if, if, which is stupid, but if, if he stays healthy, he's got a fair to solid chance to repeat most of what he did last year. I just don't know if it's fair to expect him to stay as healthy as he did last year. Yeah, it's always been an issue for him last year. It uh, wasn't, and, and that was the difference. But as you know, that was first year with Tampa. Mm -hmm. He was a guy they targeted in free agency. He was like one of the, if I remember correctly, last offseason last year, um, he was one of the first guys. Like they immediately went out and said, bring a sack Eflin. So it worked for Tampa. It worked for Eflin. We'll see if it works again. Uh, category leaders last year, Strider had 20 victories. Strider with 281 Ks. I mean, that's why he's going number one. Uh, ERA Snell of all things, um, 225. And again, just yeah, many people know this, but the danger zone is the fact that he also led baseball in walks. So <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of crazy to have an ERA that low when you lead in walks. In whip, uh, Garrett Cole was the uh, only guy, I think, under one last season. 0.96 was the number that he had. Now let's get to our one big question. Um, and this does not deal with guys at the very, very top. This deals with guys who used to be at the very, very top. Uh, we are in a interesting spot going into 2024 where we have like legends, like guys going to Cooperstown where they're a bit old and a bit fraying. So let's talk about these guys who have been fantasy dominators for like a decade. Almost all these guys. Uh, good to see Ray Flowers somehow found a photo of Justin Verlander with his beautiful wife. How'd you look at that, Ray? It's <laughs> Kate Upton and Taylor Swift there, Kyle, too. Oh, is she there? Oh, she is there. Okay. Yeah. She's not. Yeah. Kate Upton, right? Am I wrong? It's Kate Upton. Nah, That's yeah. The... Okay. I can go with that. Yeah. Yeah. I think most would. Um, okay. Scherzer, DeGrom, Kershaw, Verlander. Again, Ray, there's... You know, three of those four guys are going to Cooperstown. DeGrom probably doesn't just because there's not enough work, but he has the skill set to be that sort of pitcher. Right. But we are in a totally different spot with all four of these guys this year. Um, in effect, Ray, right now, all four of them are injured. <laughs> I mean, they're all coming back from something. We've talked a bit about Verlander. Uh, the latest there is that opening day is not looking good. I mean, there's just so little progress right now. Um, so maybe that means tax day. I don't know with Verlander. Let's start with him, Ray, just kind of the snapshot. Um, I know this week in labor, he, he was going pretty cheap. I don't think anybody's expecting him to be great. Everybody, you know, they'll couch it by saying, oh man, he's already been a miracle worker coming back from that Tommy John surgery and winning a Cy Young. And then they say, but I don't believe him this time. <laughs> That's what everybody's saying. And I, I think he's a very easy fade for everyone. You might be able to get a steal though if you can if you're like in a 12 team mixed league and you get him as like an SP5 like if he's fallen that much Ray I'll take that shot on Justin Verlander. And I think that can happen depending upon how your league plays out but I think that's a possibility. And I think the difference with Verlander and we <clears throat> we saw it last year is that he didn't lose the strikeout ball cuz there's no such thing but he lost the strikeout ball. And you know when you when you talk about him he was never you know, he had a couple of seasons where he was insanely good. And this was back, what, 2018, 19. But most of the time, he's really been, you know, nine and a half strikeout per nine, like a, more than one per inning, but not a huge number. But he's throwing 210 innings. So who cares? He's giving me 225 strikeouts, right? Well, now it's like, well, maybe he throws 160 innings or maybe it's 150. And if the number now is 138 or something like that, now he starts pulling back to the Marcus Stroman zone pretty quickly, right? And so I think that's the, the the twofold concern. One, the age and what where is he at physically? And two, with the lack of strikeouts, it's just not as easy for him nowadays as it was in the years past to say, he missed three or four or five starts. That's okay. He still gets me those strikeout totals. I just don't think that part of his game is here right now. The, the, the one thing he has over these other guys, Ray, is what you just said. Maybe it's only, you know, hopefully just two, three, maybe four starts he misses right. at the start of the year. And then we go into, you know, 90% of Justin Verlander, 85%. Like, that's a good thing. These other three guys, Ray, Kershaw, DeGrom, and Scherzer, we know they're not there for opening day. They're not going to be there in April. They're not going to be there in May, um, maybe June, but that's even kind of unlikely. So we're talking about, like, second-half contributors, which I don't care who you are. It's really tough to draft and hold and to bet. And not only that, Ray, but, like, 
DeGrom's had injury after injury for years now. So even if he gets back, it's not like, oh, he's going to give me 15 starts. He'll make it to the finish line. Like we honestly, his career says he won't. Right. Kershaw and Scherzer rates right? a matter of, man, these guys are just getting old. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're, you know, eventually the body wears down Kershaw. He's joining a team that's going to maybe limit him to five innings a start. I mean, that could be doable of these three rank them one, two, three, in terms of, I've got the most interest in this guy, second guys in the middle and the third guy. I'm not really interested in. How would you look at it with Kershaw, DeGrom and Scherzer? I would go Scherzer, DeGrom, Kershaw right now. Hmm. Uh, I think Scherzer, we're hearing Scherzer's interesting because we were kind of hearing second half. Now we're hearing potentially in June he could return, right? So I'm thinking, well, he, he's he's got the the best chance as we sit here right now of making 15 starts of these of this group. Uh, I don't, you know, I Degrom is a wild card because Degrom is, you know, he's going to pitch at some point, right, barring setbacks, and we have seen such utter and sheer dominance from Degrom. We were talking about this over the Labor Weekend that, you know, if he makes eight starts, he might be SP6 in his eight starts. You know what I mean? He's that <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So it's like he is someone if you're if you're just going to, you know, I, again, I would take Scherzer if I'm trying to do this. Right. But if I just want to throw a dart and I'm looking here because we saw it, he's falling late in drafts, a couple of bucks, that kind of thing. And you're just sitting there saying, I got aisle spots. I'll just take to Grom and wait. You and I joked, and yeah. this is the first time in years that you and I could say, yeah, I'll take DeGrom this year because the price has always been so damn high. Well, it's not just uh, – we were in that AL auction labor on Friday, and DeGrom went for a buck. And like, Ray, you're totally right. That's Sign insane. me up in an yeah. AL only for $1. on Unlimited yeah. IL spots, it's a steal. Yep. So, you know, it, it – and that's why people, oh, you hate this guy. You love this guy. You'll No, we'll always change our thing. It's all about the cost. You know, we all know what Jake DeGrom can do. It's not like Ray's been sleeping under a rock for 10 years and has never watched Jake DeGrom. We, we see it. Problem has always been people ignore that he's going to miss starts and he can't make more than 20 usually. Um, now, Ray, that everybody knows from the get-go, you know, he's always entered seasons healthy, it seems like, and so people have wished on, on what can be. Now we know he's going to miss time. And so people are then wishing on the return and at a dollar, almost anybody, Ray, is worth it for a buck. You know, anybody. Yeah. So getting a guy like DeGrom is absolutely worth a dollar. Um, yeah. And that was a matter. You know, I look at that auction. It's a matter of when you come out. Gotta, people have got to be kicking themselves. They didn't throw him out earlier for two bucks. You know, just make a $2 bid. You would have gotten a guy who could give you 10 really awesome starts down the stretch. I think if he gets thrown out earlier, he might have gone for four. Yeah. Like you're saying, it's one of those things that people, oh, okay. So... Yeah, uh, but again, I think that DeGrom, just to say it, he's almost, he's like, am I drafting him if I have no bench spots? No. If I've got aisle spots, I mean, no aisle spots. I'm not drafting him because it's just, I don't know when he's going to be back. But if I have aisle spots, you know, take a shot, put him on the aisle. And even even if you have to end up dropping because you need the aisle spot for somebody else, like you're saying, it's a 26th round pick or a dollar bid. It's like, it's not really hurting you in the grand scheme. Yeah. Um, how many of those guys will you actually be drafting though, Ray? Do you stay away from them? I mean, you probably take a shot on one of them at least. I think one of the, the, the key component here is choose whoever you want. Don't choose two of them. I think that's so, fair. Yeah. yeah. I take a shot on Scherzer, but again, a lot of that has to do with it's Max Scherzer, right? <laughs> like I, and that's the thing too. When you start aging, you start having your body break down and stuff. Is the stuff the same? Is your ability to rebound the same? Can you, you know, grunt it out if you will? Scherzer, all these guys are still very effective. It's just the workload piece. So, yeah, I agree with you completely. Take a shot, one. Don't take multiple shots on these kind of guys. And and lastly, if you let's say you have like three IL spots, which is, you know, I think that's probably normal. You know, some people just go unlimited, but, you know, let's limit it to three. That may cause you to hesitate, I think, with these guys, Ray. With, with Scherzer, DeGrom, and Kershaw especially. Uh, because that is eating up an IL spot for three months. And we know how baseball has become. All these guys end up on the IL. So mm -hmm. if, if you're keeping Scherzer on your IL at the risk of releasing, say, an outfielder who's actually pretty good, that's, you know, understand if you've got those limited IL spots, it, it can really become a roster crunch come like May 15th or something. Absolutely. Yeah. So always have to, again, this is what we're talking about, context of all these decisions, have to manage your roster accordingly based upon your league setup.
That is a look at the one big question when it comes to starting pitchers for this season. More on that position coming your way tomorrow. We'll spotlight it all week long on the show. Let us get to our other things that we're spotlighting each and every day. That is a team preview. Today on the docket, the Milwaukee Brewers are the squad that we are looking at. A bit of a transition time for Milwaukee. Obviously, they've moved on from Hayter and Corbin Burns and to an extent, Brandon Woodruff, but I guess he's still under contract, but Woodruff will not be pitching this season. And Ray, they've uh, brought up some youngsters, some guys, and then they're getting younger and they're trying to get fresh and exciting and all this. And the guy we're looking at is probably the freshest and probably the most exciting on this Brewers revamp. It's Jackson Chorio, might be the best prospect in baseball. I think it's fair to say he's one of the top two or three. Uh, you've got Holiday on that list, Langford on that list, and of course, Chorio. And uh, unlike those other two, Ray, I think it's almost certain that Trio is in the opening day lineup. Sounds like Langford may be for the Rangers. Holiday, we'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. But Trio, Ray, is, is kind of the future. He's the exciting bit with this Milwaukee team, and we're all kind of dreaming on what he can be immediately in his rookie season. Yeah, like Jackson Holiday could be an all-star and be a fantastic player and live up to expectations. And if Trio lives up to expectations, he's a way better fantasy play just period because of the style of games these two guys play you know right now holiday is going to hit 20 home runs and still nine bases churio is going to hit 19 home runs and still 43 bases right they're just totally different players in that respect so churio is the one you know we can debate again where they're going to be and how good if they're going to live up to expectations or not but churio's power speed combination is what we all want to get this is the guy that we're taking in the second round of drafts this is the guy who potentially ends up being a first round player you know, it could be a fantasy superstar. He doesn't turn 20 until another week from now. So he's super young. He's got the eight-year $82 million deal. So I don't know if that puts pressure on him or relieves pressure off him. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, he's extremely raw because of his inexperience. I mean, he's, he's got 24 at-bats above, or 24 plate appearances above double A ball. You know, he's only got one season above a, a ball. So there's there's all the, you know, the learning curve and how is this going to look and all that kind of stuff. But I do think, to your point, Kyle, the contract buys him some time if he starts out slower. You know, when I look at the age, the position, the contract, kind of the skill set, Ray, the, the easy comparison is let's hope this guy's Julio Rodriguez. You know, let's hope that. Um, and, and I, you know, I hate putting that on a 20 year old, but Rodriguez is what, 22? It's not like he's like some 29 year old who's been doing it for 10 years. So it's doable, but with Rodriguez, Ray, it's just a reminder. His first month was bad in baseball. Like, his April was rough. Um, and I remember looking at the numbers, and I guarantee you there were people dropping Julio Rodriguez after his first month in baseball. Um, and he was – I remember talking about it with shows, like he was getting screwed by umps over mm -hmm. and over again in that first month, and strikeout total was real high, and eventually he became Julio Rodriguez. But I always serve that as a reminder, Ray, just to tell everybody, give this guy time. Like if you draft Jackson Chirio, do not get angry and, and uh, you know, piss drop Jackson Chirio on, on May 10th. Like, Ray, if I'm drafting him, he's with my team – like, I'd say at least, let's say he's struggling and it's August 5th. But really, Ray, I'm sticking with like, okay. I can throw him on my bench, whatever. Right. Right. But even if I run into a roster crunch, we were just talking about dumping those starting pitchers if you run into a roster crunch. I would not drop this guy. He, he, you cannot drop talented upper end prospects, even if the first few months are bad. I just wouldn't do it with Jackson Trio. Well, I mean, in a month period of time, six home runs and 10 steals could happen even if he's struggling, like you're talking about. And that's that's the intriguing part. And again, 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 it, Kyle's right. If you're going to take a chance on players like this, and everyone does, everyone that's how everyone wants to draft, right? Let's take all, let's win the league. And then everyone drops these guys when they struggle. So yeah, I, I agree with you. If you're going to do it, have some conviction and stick with it because you're either, you're either in or you're out. And too many people are in and then out and then in and then out. You're in or you're out. Yeah. I will say his ADP is like in the one forties. Mm -hmm. That's not crazy to me, Ray. I'm totally fine with that price tag. I may even take him earlier this year. Well, again, Jackson holidays, you know, he's inside the 200. So he's, I think they're baking in a little bit of the concern with the player time with the Orioles. And I think the skill set again, not being overly, overly frenzy friendly as Cheerios could be. 
Uh, I'm fine taking Trio at that price point too. Uh, again, it, you got to build and be smart about who you take behind them and how you build your outfield and all that in case the worst case scenario occurs. But that's an extreme talent who could be fantasy relevant in a big time way as early as the season. Um, and early in the season, don't be surprised. This is another thing. Julio Rodriguez early in his rookie year, I think batted like seventh and eighth. Mm-hmm. He was way down the lineup. Trio could be there too. Now, Rodriguez is now a solid number two, number three hitter, but uh, it's it's very parallel. <laughs> Just hope it turns out as well uh, for Trurio as it did for Rodriguez. Okay, let's get to four questions with this Brewers squad, Ray. Uh, number one, speaking of the lineup, Willie Adamas. Uh, big letdown last season. D- do you like him for a rebound this year? He was like surprisingly good, and then he was surprisingly bad. So we have to figure what is he for this season? I think Willie Adamas, does he rebound? I'll give him some rebound, sure. Uh, but even if he rebounds, I, you know, he doesn't steal bases. He's not going to hit for batting average. It's just not a profile I like. And with the way I've, I've, I've been drafting and the way the rankings look to me, I don't want a, a 240, 28 home run season out of my shortstop spot. That's just not the way I want to build my team. So I'm going to say I'd be surprised if he's on any of my squads. I can give him a little bit more than last year, but even so – be careful when you draft him that you just make sure you understand who he is. He's a he's a he's a counting category guy only. He's not helping you out in those two categories, which are tough, which are batting average and steals. This team is transitioning. They're not totally waving the white flag. And Ray, the reason I can say that is is they did make some moves. They added guys. They're not totally just giving up. One of them was Reese Hoskins. Um, and I, I feel like Ray uh, very quickly he's been forgotten. You know, it's just, a, and and I don't know if he was ever beloved because he was just kind of a slugging first baseman who didn't give you much batting average. But is he being unfairly forgotten after a total full year away from baseball and now with a new team in Milwaukee? Yeah, I think it's a good place to hit. He's 31 years old. Uh, he's shown a consistent track record of being what he is. And that's a similar offensive producer to Willie Adamas but one that takes a walk and is, I think, a better offensive player, right, if that makes sense. Uh, I think that it's very fair to suggest that both Adamas and Hoskins will have similar numbers. You know, just which position are you looking for in your draft? What are the costs there? I think that it's very reasonable to say, you know, Hoskins should be 25 to 30 home runs, 80 RBIs, hitting 245, 50. Uh, So, yeah, if, if he falls in your draft at that corner infield spot, he might end up being very attractive in the fantasy game. So you still have Adamas, you had Hoskins, you still have Yelich, um, you had Gary Sanchez. I mean, moves were made by this team. Now let's go to the other side, Ray. That kind of indicates the transition. Moving on, um, Corbin Burns was traded. Mm-hmm. That leaves us with, at the top, Freddie Peralta. Uh, now he's got to be the Brewers ace. How close is he to being a fantasy ace? Um, I, I, you know, the second half, we've heard so much about Cole Reagans, so much about Tarek Skubal. Freddie Peralta Ray was dominating in the second half last season for Milwaukee. He was. And remember, Woodruff is out too. So it's yeah. their three three headed monsters now, Peralta. I, I mean, I think with Peralta, he's 5'11, 195. He's got that cross, a little bit of crossfire motion. Uh, there's not a track record here of big innings. There's a track record here of dominant innings, but not big innings. Uh, I think that there's some concern about how he loses release point over the course of the season, all those kind of things. And, you know, I, I think that. If you draft him looking at last season's numbers, I think that's pretty fair, right? Uh, I do question whether he can throw more innings. Uh, I do question if he can replicate fully the strikeout rate. So I would expect him to be 90%, 95% of what we saw last year. I think I'm comfortable with that. But fantasy ace, I mean, I struggle to call a guy who has one season of 160 innings an ace. I just, (laughs) I know that's the era we're in, but I, I struggle with that, Kyle. They could turn to him. Like, if everything worked out perfectly, Ray, he could be one of those guys in the 190s just because they would need him to do that. He's not young anymore. Uh, Maybe Milwaukee would have him go that direction. Uh, Question number four, and I don't think this is a huge immediate concern, but we got to be realistic about it. There is a chance Devin Williams is traded by this team. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, he's not a free agent at the end of the year. I think he's under contract through, like, 25. But you look at how they handled Hayter. You look at the fact that, you know, there's really no reason to have this dominating closer if you're not going to win 80 games. Um, Additionally, he's now arbitration eligible, so he's racking up big salaries. 
he's not going to resign with Milwaukee. He's nearing 30 years old. So, like, Ray, there's a lot of signs that indicate some point in the next year, year and a half, Devin Williams is traded. It may not be early, but it could be. So I ask, are you looking at any other relievers? Like, we, we've talked a lot about, especially in, in deeper leagues, 15-teamers, you can't get three closers. You know, it, sometimes you struggle to get two. Our guys on Milwaukee, you know, there's some big arms here. There's some massive arms in this bullpen. Should be people be thinking, especially in holds league, sold league, Milwaukee is a decent place to be behind Williams. Um, are there any names you really like? Even, you know, guys that you're kind of targeting in leagues with holds and such. I mean, Abner Uribe, who you may not even know who the <laughs> hell I'm, throws 100 miles an hour. He yeah. legitimately throws 100 miles an hour. Like It may um, end up at the backstop, but it's 100 yeah, miles Right, right, but he, it's, it's fast, Kyle. <laughs> Nick Lelouch. Um, I think Joel Pamps is is got to be someone that people are interested in. It has to be. I think we have ranked at like 53rd relief pitch or something like that, which is – or Ray, I, I don't like – the fact I don't like drafting. I say this to people all the time. I don't like you drafting a team to make a trade for it to work. So yeah. I don't also want to draft a player in Major League Baseball hoping his team makes a trade for it to work. But he had 27 holds last year. His ERA was two and a half. His whip was one. He had a strikeout inning. He pitched really well. So in a sold league, he vaults up the, the list. And you know there is a. I think it's a it's a very real possibility that Devin Williams is traded. I mean, think about this too. What if Freddie Peralta gets hurt? This pitching staff then becomes hideous, and they're they're gonna they're gonna struggle to win seventy games. I mean that that could legit happen this year unless their offense explodes. So yeah, I think Devin Williams absolutely is someone that could be dealt with. P- Pamps and Uribe are two arms that at least you should be made aware of, even if you're not going to draft them. Um, guys added in the off season. We mentioned Hoskins, Sanchez, Jacob Junis, DL Hall, uh, Joey Ortiz. Uh, Ortiz and Hall came over in that trade for Corbin Burns. Prospects-wise, again, Chirio, we've seen some other guys. Sal Freelick, um, you know, Terang at second base. Uh, Weimer, I guess you could throw him in there. There's a couple others. I mean, Jefferson uh, Quero, Quero is a is a um, catcher, which, you know, you're behind Contreras at this point, but he's like a top 15, top 20 prospect in baseball, Jefferson Quero. There's a kid named Tyler Black. Who Black's interesting, Ray, because he can play in a variety of spots, like second, third, outfield. Um, I think we see both those guys at some point this year. So those are probably more you'd get interested if they're called up when you know the circumstance. But Milwaukee does have a fairly solid minor league system. So this this transition, they don't expect it to be like Pittsburgh or Baltimore-like, you know, five years. It's like a two-year thing. And then they're going to be back at it. Uh, Ray, in closing, who do you take a chance on with this Brewers team? Like I want to say DL Hall because they really need That's him. That's what I'm saying, Ray. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do it. Well, you're going to go ahead, Kyle. Take DL Hall. Well, I, I took a chance on him last year out of the bullpen with Baltimore. He was kind of my random dart throw in the bench round of, oh, that guy could have 15, 20 saves. Now, obviously, Felix Bautista did what Felix Bautista did. They didn't mm-hmm. DL Hall. Um, I do think, Ray, <clears throat> I will always take a shot on this arm, and it sounds like he's rotation or bust. I don't think he's going into the bullpen. Um, this is like your 29th round pick you know, to get a SP eight and to see what you get from DL hall. So I, I do like it. It may, he may be a guy that, Hey, the first seven starts are pretty ugly. He's sitting with a five eighty ERA. Okay. Then I'll move on. But in the last round, he's my take a chance on guy. And my take a chance on is another youngster at South Freelick, who we mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, there are projections that have him hitting second or third, potentially in this lineup. We know that he was playing other positions besides the outfield. So he might even gain some flexibility. The bat, I won't say it was disappointing as a rookie, but it was kind of disappointing. But I think things are much better here in year two. So Sal Freelick for me. Well, he's my pass on. Mm. Sal I, you're right where he's at in the order and the positional. I just don't think there's much with the bat. I could be totally wrong because like you look at his numbers, Ray, there's nothing there that like really should get you pumped. I don't think, but he's young. He's got a prospect tag. I don't mm. want to say it's, it's ruined, but I'm kind of passing more on Freelick uh, instead of jumping on. I like, I, like I'd rather have Willie Adamas and guys like that Hoskins mm-hmm. uh, than Freelick, I think. So he's my pass on. Who's yours? Willie Adamas. Ha ha. We're seeing this <laughs> one totally different. Uh, Cause I said this earlier, Adamas is fine for what he is, but you know, looking up the middle, I'd like some dynamic nature. He has none. You know, it's 30 home runs or bust for him. He's, I don't even know if he's a 250 hitter and he has a good season on the base pass. He's still six. That's just not the profile I'm looking at when I'm talking the middle infield. 
That is a look at the Milwaukee Brewers. Minnesota tomorrow, I think it is, the Minnesota Twins. So we'll take a look at that organization and franchise for the upcoming season. Uh, in closing, we got some NFL news. Um, let's see, Mike Evans getting paid. It's a two-year contract, $52 million, 35 of it is guaranteed, and it's back with Tampa. And that story, like in the last 36 hours, like there was reporting he wanted to be with an elite quarterback. Um, whether Baker Mayfield or not is that elite quarterback, Baker Mayfield's not even signed. So right. they signed Evans, and maybe that's a two-for-one deal. Maybe both guys will be back. But, Ray, I will say this for Mike Evans. I, I think he is, even in the grand scheme of things, like people don't realize how good his career has been. Like he's, we have these great receivers like an A.J. Brown or, you know, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and that's great. Those guys are stellar. You know, they've been doing it for two, three years. This guy's been doing it for a decade almost, and it's it's impressive the 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 staying power of somebody like Mike Evans thus far. Yeah, I mean, as long as he doesn't get hurt this year, he blows past 800 catches and 100 touchdowns. Like, and every year of his career, he's had a thousand yards. Uh, yeah, it's the, I want to play for an elite quarterback. Now I'm going back to an organization that doesn't even have a quarterback. <laughs> Okay. Everyone wants to catch passes from Tom Brady. I get it, Mike. Well, but... 35 million guaranteed, right? Yeah. You're like, well, I guess I could deal with Kyle Trask. <laughs> yeah, and it might be okay that I led the league last year with 13 receiving touchdowns and had 79 <laughs> catches on 136 targets. Like, I think Baker Mayfield threw me the ball enough. So, yeah, yeah um, he, it, I think it's, it's probably an important signing for the, the team. So they don't, people don't feel like it's Tank City or whatever, but mm -hmm. it would have been great to see him go somewhere else. But th the good news is he stays here. He'll be the featured guy. Chris Godwin's just a chain mover, right? So mm -hmm. Mike Evans is very likely to see a volume of work he saw last season. Yeah, Mayfield might be franchise tagged. They're trying to work on an agreement. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Darren Waller is at least thinking about retirement. That happened quick. Um, you know, there were some thoughts. He you know, doesn't know what he's going to do, I guess, in the future. Uh, that would not make the Giants very excited. I don't think they, they spent a lot of money and. And getting them over, I guess, into, into New York. Um, NFL thinking about an 18 game season. This is not immediate, by the way, but there was a little rumbling. I think it was Mike Florio said, Oh, yeah, 18 games are on the docket. Um, but I he indicated it would be with a new CBA, which that's five, six years from now. So, Ray, let's not complain just yet. Okay, save your anger for 2030 when that happens. Well, yeah, when the league moves to this, I'll be retiring that year. Oh, so really? It works, well, it that just works problem? out well. That's my that's my plan, Kyle. Um, <laughs> But yeah, the, again, the, you know, the expansion, when they're playing in all these countries and all these days, you, you, this is what the NFL does. And it works. And all of you watching, listening to us, you pay and you want it and they'll give it to you. And players be damned. Health of the players, who cares? But yeah, it, it's it's coming. We know it's coming. Isn't it? Is it well, like what are the odds this doesn't happen? 5%? It's going to happen. Uh, another thing Ray loves is the NFL Combine, so I'm sure he enjoyed watching uh, wide receiver Xavier Worthy set a new record, Ray, in the 40-yard dash. Yeah. Uh, 4 2 one The previous record holder is the immortal Canton-bound John Ross. <laughs> so, speed is not everything, okay? Not Chris Johnson, huh? John Ross, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> John Ross. <laughs> Which, he was a top 10 pick, wasn't he? Yeah. John Ross, I think he was. Got a crazy T. Higgins, and Jamar Chase, and John Ross. I think he was like number eight. He was pretty high there for the Bengals. Number nine. Uh, yeah. What was he? Nine? Nine. You're right. Yep. Uh, crazy. Uh, and and also, don't want to leave before mentioning uh, Chris Mortensen passing away yesterday. He He's had uh, major battles with cancer the last probably half decade, half dozen years probably. Um, and continued to be on ESPN. I think he had finally kind of said, oh, this is going to be it at the end of this past season. Uh, but unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 72. And, you know, for those of a certain age, Ray, not only do we play uh, mono leagues in fantasy baseball, but uh, he was the original Schefter. He was mm -hmm. the original Rappaport. Um, yeah. There weren't really guys that did the um, the insider thing, you know, talking trades and free agency. And now that is a crazy business i mean be, being the insider uh, i mean Schefter, i i kind of wonder do these guys ever get off the clock because like they always have to be breaking news but right. Wilkinson was kind of the original uh in in that uh in that development if you will of a tv career yeah and a very important person for football and for the dark sport like you said and it you know it, it's we all ought to go sometime and you know it's unfortunate that it was now for him and with the struggles mm -hmm. he had with his health and everything like that but i i think that 
if there's a positive and something negative like this, it's that I'm assuming everyone, you know, he's been dealing with this for a while. So it's not one of those sudden things where you didn't get a chance to talk to him and express how you feel. And hopefully everything was in order and all that. But yeah, he's a significant loss. And as you said, others have picked up the baton since, but he was at the forefront of this. Yeah, So did want to get that uh, news out in case you happen to miss it yesterday. Uh, Tomorrow we are back at you 11 a.m. Eastern. We'll uh, see if we got anything with Ronald Acuna, maybe Kevin Gaussman. Got the Gunnar Henderson debut. We got more on starting pitchers. We'll talk the twins and gosh knows what else. Uh, Ray, fun one today. Let's do it again tomorrow. How about that? Sounds good, Kyle. Yeah, we will see you on Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, however you consume us each and every day. This has been Fantasy Sports Daily, powered by FantasyGuru.com.